what's going on folks and we're back so um you know what's interesting is i i've recently started kind of really getting into uh shooting suppressed and one of the interesting things about shooting suppressed is when you go from shooting suppressed and then you go to shooting normally you start to really hate the sound of a firearm and i don't mean that overall i mean just immediately so when i'm on a range and i'm and i'm shooting suppressed for the for like half the range time and then I go to a gun that doesn't have a suppressor and I shoot on it and I shoot that gun it drives me insane and just you don't realize how loud it is um, and as one person put it it's just noise pollution um, that being said what's really interesting is what suppressors do and how they affect firearms um, I recently had my um, one of my favorite rifles is my HK MR556 SBR which I call it my 416 clone and what was interesting about it was I, um, I initially zeroed that particular rifle um, at about 50 yards with uh, 55 grain 5.56 and didn't really have any issues. And that particular gun is a piston driven system. And so it it isn't adjustable, though. The gas isn't adjustable. And when I say gas isn't adjustable, meaning like the amount of gas that comes from firing the bullet and how it's routed, because as anybody knows, with an AR-15 system, it's pretty much run by the gas <laughs> um the escaping gas of the bullet and so um initially when i was shooting the gun i zeroed in and didn't really have any problems and um when i recently took a buck doyle course a uh, scope carbine course at the end of one of the nights i decided to bring bring uh, bring my sbr out and do some shooting with it and and realized i couldn't hit the broad side of a barn i mean my, my shots were everywhere it was it was kind of disheartening a little bit to be honest with you just because it was, it was a gun that i really cherish a gun that i really love but i couldn't hit anything with it and and in part it was because the gun was suppressed and i think people undervalue and underestimate the dynamic of a gun and how it changes when you suppress it and not only that the type of ammo you use uh, how heavy it is everything and so it, it's so interesting to me how these small things when it comes to shooting don't seem very consequential, but then make such a huge difference in the way that the gun performs. Because I was, I was thinking to myself, what could have been the issue? Well, I know the gun was overgassed, clearly, um, meaning that there was just way too much pressure and it was pretty much abusing the gun and abusing the bolt going back and forth and then causing the gun to kind of eat itself alive in a sense. Um, but I was still confused because I shot it before and I wasn't having any of these issues. So um, I, I did some more thinking, and then I went over to Modern Outfitters, and um, I had some I had someone throw some brakes on some of the guns that I have, and I just kept thinking, kept thinking, and then I called a good friend of mine um, by the name of James, and then it, it clicked after talking with him, and it was the ammo. I was using the same ammo I was using for the Buck Doyle scope carbine course, where we were shooting out to 900 meters, and we were running 75 grain, and the bullet, I mean, the ammo is incredibly hot, so versus the 55 grain ammo I was shooting before where the load wasn't that hot. I was still, it was, gun was still over gas, but it, that, that was compounded when I went, went to the even hotter load of the 75 grain. And that what was, that's what was causing my gun to pretty much just shoot sporadically all over the place. Um, so long story short, the one thing that I love about, about the gun world and, and being involved in guns is you're never really ever gonna get bored. And, and as many guns as I get my hands on and as, and as many guns as I shoot, I never flirted with the idea of being bored because there are so many little things involved that you're constantly learning that you never really knew about. Um, you know, I thought you take espresso, you throw it on the gun and you're good. Um, you start to understand the, that there are so many other things involved in it um, that could come across as a bit annoying. But when you really, look at it and you approach it from the standpoint of no this is intriguing and it's, and it's interesting and, it, and it's me learning something new about something that i already love you know i i feel like i end up having the best of both worlds like i will never be bored of guns i just can't there are just too many in, uh, small intricacies and, and and different components and assets to the guns that that will continue to always be there and things are always changing and 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 i absolutely love it and um, I feel for anybody who's in an industry where they feel like they've mastered it to the point where there's nothing else to learn. Um, because at that point, that's when boredom sets in. And the last thing I want to do is have a passion that I'm completely bored with. So um, 
I, I, I love the kind of new dynamic of, of running suppressed guns and, 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 figuring and figuring out how guns react. And it, it's going to create a, uh, add a whole other element to my gun review videos as well. Um, uh, because now it's like, you know, guns act completely different suppressed when they're not suppressed. So now, you know, you have to talk about it from those two, from those two perspectives. So I think that's pretty freaking awesome personally. Um, and uh, I, I hope to continue to learn. I hope I never get to the point where I've mastered anything in this gun industry. And I will say, you know, uh, I, I planned on really getting into long distance shooting and I've kind of started that journey and, and taking the scope carbine course that I took with Buck Doyle um, was kind of the genesis of that at this point. I mean, I, I was tagging a target at 900 meters with, an, with a 16 inch AR-15 and 15 to 20, 20 mile per hour winds and still hitting the target. Um, so there's something incredibly satisfying about being able to do that and then just a learning process. I mean, I literally, I, mean, I looked at it and approached it like I have homework to do when I go home after leaving this course and I think that's the way it should be. Uh, so with that being said, that is uh, it for CN Live today. I am calling on the war and be sure to join us again Monday for another awesome show.